Okay, have ever done this before? Like, taking a book and cutting pictures out of it. Who's done this before in his childhood? Yeah, most of us actually. All right, so this is, we have a quick question. Why do children do you think they're doing that? Why do they cut pictures from the books and try to play with them and animate them? Is there a reason behind this? Yes. Imagination. Imagination? Just yeah. creativity. Yeah, what else? It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Probably they love the colors in the picture. Yes, they love the colors in the picture. Also, kids uh, learn by touching things. When you touch them, they stay in their mind. So we did play with them. Exactly. So we are saying like very interesting things. The first one is they love pictures, they love colors, and they love also moving them. So they are things that children always love. So we have something else. Here, who has this in his class? Like suffering always from students using mobile phones and always they are obliged just to switch off their phones. Okay, since we are teachers, we always face this in our classrooms. We always come and ask students, please switch off your phone. It's one of the rules that we have in class. So, this is another fact I want you to remember it later, okay? Then, we move on to this. This is my subject. It is about the use or the need for using ICs in foreign language teaching, okay? So, why do we use, why do we need IC in our classrooms? There are reasons behind it. Okay, now one of these reasons, we have this fact again. So we have uh, gadget addiction. We need to use, like, see a lot of students now, especially in the United States, are using a lot of gadgets all the time. You can see student expenses going down because of a lot of gadgets in his pocket. So, and the gadget, you can put an iPhone here, a camera here, Blackberry, and laptop here, and all the time, listen to music, just like all distraction all the time. So we have this also. It's a kind of fact that we can use for some reason also. Then, okay, what is an ICT? Okay, this is the description by the United Nations, so it's a lot of blah blah blah. You don't need to read this. What is interesting is it is information communication technology. This is the only thing that we want to talk about. So this is it in general. Without only reading this, don't read that, okay? You can read it how by it. So this, the ICD enhances the five C's in language learning. The five C's are the goals of learning a language. The goals, why the purpose? Why do we learn language? We learn language mainly for these things, five things. The first C is communication. We learn language to communicate. We know that our students, we don't, we don't measure what they learn in language, what they know in language, but we want to know what they can do with this language. This is what you can for us. The second thing is connections. Connections is to connect what they learn in the subject with other subjects. Because we have, we should have our multitask students who can use the knowledge in one subject and benefit for another subject. This is what we call connection between things. Then also we have comparison. Comparison is when you teach student language, you need to ask them to compare between what they've learned in this language, on this culture, with their language and with their culture. And this, they can understand better their own culture first, before understanding yours or understanding your language. Then the next one is culture. Here we ask them to understand the other's culture, to understand the way things, understand his traditions, his costumes, his everything. This is like how we can start building global society. Then we come to communities. Communities is students should not stop using like the language only in classrooms because it's not the only place we can use language. We should like bring the class to outside. This is what we're looking to do. Because language what we, most of the time we try to limit it into our walls, but we have to bring it out. Then this is the five C's that you know. And if in general, in a nutshell, our students love, you know, colors, you know, uh, fluffy things, smooth things, you know, this is what the thing that we love, and also the students, okay? So here, uh, we may try to apply some kind of uh, marketing uh, strategies in teaching. I may consider a teacher as a salesperson or somebody who has an entrepreneur or something, that he has a product to sell to somebody. 
So what if you, if you want to sell a product? You should consider the one you are selling to, your customers. Our students are our customers. Is if you want to sell something to them, we have to see the way they want it or what they like. It's not what they what we like or what makes us comfortable. It's what makes them comfortable, what we're looking for. It's interesting to use this kind of strategy. For example, you know, like a barber shop, for example, is trying to evolve, like do a kind of evolution in the way he presents his stuff or his product, for example. He has, for instance, you can see, it can start with the sign with, without colors, just read it, then it passes to colors, then to uh, light, and to, to flashing things. This is like, he's trying to promote his product on top. Then, okay, why using ICD in general? Okay, ICD in general is a kind of delivering uh, knowledge to students. Instead of bringing students all the time to our class, you can just uh, deliver to them. It's very interesting, not like a pizza. All right, this is also one other major uh, factor that we can use is its creativity. Okay, students work in groups to create. Because in a classroom with only a whiteboard, you cannot ask students to create out of nothing. If you want to create, you should give something. At least, like, give them scissors and papers to do something. But with hands this and try to imagine, it doesn't work. There is also uh, authenticity. This is what we come for. Always we want a language to be authentic. Means I should not teach students the language the way I, I, I study it or the way I speak it. It's the way it is language. For example, as uh, non native speakers, we find problems to bring uh, authentic language to our students because of our accents. So, what we do is we try to connect people from outside who have the authentic language in order to make them know this language exactly the way it is. There's also uh, creativity with groups, it's a, it has a new work. Then there's also to have multitask students, interdisciplinary things in classrooms. They can use what they learn in one class to use in another class. That's all interesting in this one. And the last thing maybe is to push our students to cope with the new uh, changes of life. Because as you know, most of the students who are teaching now we are building them for another another time. It's not for our time. We are trying to ditch them for some kind of jobs that not exist yet. Some jobs that will come in the future. So we should not bring them up the way we were brought up. Then, okay, so but what kind of te technology we're talking about here? You know computers. We use them in teaching and everything. It's useful, you know, we always. But what is interesting for me is that we have a shift from C-A-L-L -L call to S-C-M-C. C-A-L, as you know, is computer um, assisted language learning. It's like used computer. This is kind of very old theory. Then we have the shift to C-M-C, which is computer mediated communication. It means we shift to the use of if computer just for communication or for something else. Then in computer, we can talk about communication exactly the Social media, and you know social media are voice screening these days. We have, the, for example, Skype. You can Skype with your students outside and bring people from outside to talk to your students. It's also very interesting. And here we have an example of a video how to connect students and they like to get connected to outside. There's one experience of some teachers who brought people to talk to the students from outside. If those people speak language, you know, uh, native speakers, to talk to the students. And the students always like this kind of stuff, it means they get to learn the language exactly and check the culture and they have relationships with people from outside. This is one of the things that I like also. But I think we don't have any time I like for this that we can connect with other countries. Here she said, okay. The Where was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's going to take a long time because really it's, uh, you know. Subscribe. I have new friends from all over the world. Really cool. Okay, here's the book of the girl, all right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, you know YouTube. Uh, there's no need to talk about YouTube because uh, our colleague already talked about YouTube and the use of it. It's a magic tool, so we can use that. Then we move on to the next web, Facebook. Oh my god, with Facebook. Ah, uh, Facebook. I miss it. <laughs> okay, can, Facebook can use it for many reasons, as you know. It's, it can check in the reason that you need to use Facebook for. And one of the things that I like, like, we have the, uh, like, people who get absent for the class, they don't, they don't have, like, any justification after that. 
Like, if you are absent, don't show on Facebook. Okay, I like this one. You can make a virtual class which students should attend all the time. At least you come and check and see what we're discussing. It's very interesting. And also, shy, shy students can shine up, they can work, and you don't like try to say that we're shy, that's why we're not participating. Also, it's very interesting. And there are, you know, very, you know, there are 50 reasons to use this Facebook. We don't have time for this, but I can tell you later. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, there's also blogging, there's uh, podcasting, there's wikis, texting, online chatting, e paper, paper, all sorts of lot of beautiful stuff to use in class. <laughs> then we have uh, software assisted creativity. You can use some kind of software if you use some in order to create something for instance. It's still benefiting from what people did, you can do something also for that. For example, you can we have this kind of website, it's called Go and meet. I like it. It's very beautiful. Like we can come to see it later, maybe. <coughs> yeah, take some time to download. Nice. Uh, okay, remember this one, please. Okay. Also, we have when we say gadgets, we don't also talk only about computers, phones, cameras, any gadget. So here we have a shift from CMC to tell. CMC as communi uh, computer media communication to Tell, it means technology, enhanced language learning. It means technology, anything. It's not only computer. And here, bus sharing. It means like it's the old strategy, the old method, bus sharing them with people. It's also interesting to tell this. For example, teachers can be creative. They can be creative in a way that they can create a lot of stuff for the students themselves, you know, without only waiting for uh, others to create stuff for you. What is that? Is it already? What is that? It's on the internet. Where is that? Explore. Explore? Yeah. Okay, thank you for following me because I realize I'm not with that. It's hard to talk about technology and you don't know how to use it. <laughs> Where is that? Okay. I'm just trying to get it. No, it's not this one. It's okay. the first one. Ah, okay. Because we put it to bake, you know? Yeah. Here. Because I like the one I want to Thank you for patience, you know. I don't know on this term, it's amazing. He's a couple of crap to watch your back. Danger may be lurking where you least expect it. You may find a relative, friend, or neighbor coming after one thing. Your brain. This Halloween is forecasted to be a high season for zombie attacks. But we're going to help you get through it, brain intact. This is Zombies in Plain English. The first step is identifying a zombie. Let's take your Uncle Dan. Here's Dan as we all know him, a normal guy. Now, let's look at Dan as a zombie. Notice the unnatural mouth position and dark eyes. The shoulders will be off kilter. Arms reaching. Okay, maybe we don't have to legs. Legs. Okay. Okay. Skin. Oh, okay. This is a what? zombie. Be careful this Halloween. I like you may see people that resemble zombies. Remember, zombies don't eat candy. Only brains. You may also see them dancing with Michael Jackson. These are actors. Zombies don't dance. When you encounter a real zombie, it's time to have a plan. Here's how to survive an attack. Your first reaction may be to retreat to a home or business. This is only a short-term solution because they will never stop, ever. Instead, consider heading to a Costco. Don't plan to wait out an attack without proper rations. Now, keep your cool. Remember that zombies may move quickly in the early stages of infection. Don't underestimate their speed. Also, consider a retreat to high altitudes. Studies have shown that zombies react poorly to cold weather, causing them to become brittle and slow. Lastly, zombies can't swim, so a retreat via boat could help. And remember those rations. If you're not the retreating type, the obvious next move is counter-attack. This brings us to our last step, how to kill the undead. The simple idea is, kill the brain, stop the zombie. This is generally done through head trauma or decapitation. 
but any method that removes the zombie brain's ability to direct the undead body will work. As starting points, we suggest large caliber bullets to the head or decapitation via machete, axe, or chainsaw. Now, chainsaws are advanced tools that should be used carefully. Napalm or grenades can also be effective, but be careful. A flaming zombie can be even more dangerous than a normal one. If your friend has a zombie bite, unfortunately, there is only one outcome. Infection is absolutely irreversible. Don't bother with antiseptic or band-aids. Your friend is not your friend anymore. Face the inevitable and save your brain. Kill them with dignity before they become undead too. Remember, be prepared. Plan your route and rations. Be on the lookout. And when they... Whoa, this just in. We've received an unconfirmed report that zombies have been sighted in southern British Columbia. They may be heading south. Repeat, heading south. Saji, what the... Did you hear that? Oh, oh, shh. Do you like this? It's good. What is that? It's just like the, 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 the kind of picture I talked to you about using the camera to film them and try to move them in order to make a story. So here we can use also this. For There are many common crops you can find online, people making this product for you. You can use them for teaching our students some kind of cultural stuff. This is for the Halloween. You can teach a lot of things via this. But also, your students can use the same strategy to, to, uh, to show something. Like, uh, I made this very silly video. It's, it, it's very silly. OK, it's a simple one. What is the sound? Where is it? How uh, to well, talk about, for example, if you want to talk about vacation or something. We can make a story, cut pictures like this, and try to film them and change the And this is some other states. We may go and see Washington first. Okay guys, I think this is enough because oh, by the way this is kind of uh, it's a visual video that you made it with pictures and they filmed it and it's very easy enough to make. I don't know if I can show you the, the video we are trying to, to, to show here, but it doesn't show up, you know. Maybe we have problems. <laughs> oh, I really want to show you this. Okay, by the way, this Go Animates is a kind of website where you can make uh, dialogues for a student to use in class, for example. It's going to be, you can find avatars of people, you can choose like your characters that you want to uh, play the dialogue, you can choose the setting, the place, house, in class or something. Then you try to, you add a dialogue, either the script means the, the, the speech, and you try to speak it to each other. It means, and if you, your language is existing there, you can use the other the language that existing. If not, you can record it yourself. It's also very interesting, but I don't have like tools to show it to you, but you know, it's here, but I'm gonna admit it. If somebody wants to sit on my laptop, it's okay because this laptop is not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny, yours is a computer. All right. By the way, this is like kind of, I think it's like it's uh, technology would never replace teachers, as you know. But teachers who do not use technology properly knows will be replaced. In the future. <laughs> so if you want to keep your job, just try to use this. Yeah. So, you know, it's very interesting. Thank you so much. All right, if anybody would like to see a copy of the presentations and the present presenters are willing to share, I'm sure you can write to FLTA staff and get the PowerPoint or the Prezi. There is a coffee break outside, so feel free to go to that, and then we're going to proceed to our next series of discussions, right? Thank you guys so much.